1. Oh man, so this one happened a few nights ago. This month has been particularly slow since it's back to school season. And families, which make up most of our clientele, tend to cut down on spending and going out this time of year and buying groceries instead. This Friday night was surprisingly slow though, even for September. My two co-workers serving on each side of me decided to take on a party of 30 together on the banquets and in return, they gave me their booths. I'd say I got the better end of the deal for sure. Anyway, now that I've set the scene, this couple comes in and is sat in one of my booths. A husband, we'll call him H, wife, obviously, W, and two kids, super, super nice and super patient. The kids are also super well behaved. They don't even complain when their appetizer took 20 minutes due to a kitchen error. So skipping past entrees and moving on to dessert. I ask them if they'd like anything and H says he wants to take something to go, which usually indicates he already knows what he wants. But I figured I'd do my dessert presentation because, hey, it's my job. I work at a place that sells over 40 flavors of a particular dessert. You know the one. And we recently came out with four new flavors. So it is pumpkin season, so we do have our two new pumpkin and pumpkin pecan flavors. Oh, pumpkin pecan! Yes, it's pumpkin flavor with a pecan pie crust. I'm about to change your mind, huh? Ha, <laughs> yeah, you just might. I left to take care of my other tables. And once about three minutes passed, I came back to them. So have you two decided on a flavor? Yeah, I think we're gonna go with the pumpkin pecan. Yay, I knew I could change your mind. What were you going to originally get? Honestly, just a plain cheesecake. <laughs> Don't worry, you definitely won't regret this one. So I go to the bakery to retrieve the cheesecake and bring it back to the table along with her check, which was $78. He hands me two fifties and tells me to keep the change. I'm obviously ecstatic as it's well over a 20% tip and I'm hoping it isn't some sort of mistake. I thank them, tell them I hope to see them again, close the bill out to cash and consider it to be the best table I had that night. So fast forward to me doing paperwork at the end of the night. My manager calls me into the office and pulls up my favorite table's bill. Hey, did something seem kinda off with this table? No, not at all, in fact, they left me a pretty generous tip. My manager proceeds to explain that the wife recently called in and the conversation basically went like this. Thank you for calling Awesome Restaurant, this is M. how may I help you? Yeah, hi. I had a bit of a problem with the server we had tonight. She wouldn't stop hitting on my husband. How do you mean she was hitting on your husband? She was just hitting on my husband. Okay, ma'am, could you maybe give me a specific example as to what you mean? I mean, I don't know. When he said what dessert he wanted, she said that was her favorite, and she was giggly. And then, what was with her saying, I hope to see you again soon? Like, why would she want to see us again soon? What the hell does she mean by that? Ma'am, these all seem like very general statements that we train our servers to say. I don't think my employee meant anything by it. She was just doing her job. Whatever, bye! At the time, I didn't think it was that funny, but my manager thought it was hysterical. I couldn't understand it, though. How could you be so insecure in a relationship that you think the waitress is hitting on your damn husband who's not even her type? Just because she was suggesting a new dessert the restaurant had. Has anyone ever experienced something like this? 2. So I work as a temp at this kind of small cafe and we serve lunch during weekdays in the form of a salad buffet. The hour between 12 and 1 p.m. is the busiest, and it tends to get pretty hectic at times, but usually it can be handled if things go as normal and no problems come up. When it comes to work, I have a few pet peeves, and one of them is dealing with parents who pay no attention to their kids and don't do anything to correct their behavior if they bother other people. It's probably clear where this is going. So today, a little before rush hour, a mom and her kid came over to have lunch. The child is probably about two. He can walk and crawl, but from what I saw, he can't really talk yet. They sit at a table near the salad buffet, and since it's starting to get kind of busy, 
I'm filling up the salad display so nothing runs out during the rush hour. The kid kinda runs around in the open space, but since there aren't that many people besides them, I pay no attention while the mom just kinda laughs at the kid doing some kid stuff. Like sitting in the middle of the floor and removing his shoes. The rush comes along, and I pretty much walk between the dining hall and the kitchen non-stop, either carrying dirty dishes to be washed, or bringing clean ones to the buffet. At this point, the mom and the kid have stopped eating and have been finished for a while now, so they are just hanging out at the same table near the buffet. People are lining up and trying to move along fast so they can get to their lunch. But the kid decides to continue his previous action of sitting in the middle of the floor, laying in the middle of the floor, and rolling on the floor at people's feet so they have to dodge the child and avoid stepping on him. What does the mom do? Just giggle and, in a way, encourage the child by talking to him in a baby voice and asking things like, Are you on the floor? What have you got there? Oh, is that your shoe? Which just seems to egg the kid on. Me and the other staff are kind of eyeing the kid and the mom, wondering if we should say something, but at the time, everyone had so many other things to do, so we decided to leave it for now. But the kid moves on to completely ball up the mat that's laid on the floor near the buffet, leaving it in the middle of the floor, and people are from time to time tripping on it a little. I then pause my carrying of plates to spread the mat back on the floor, while the kid stares at me confused. And the mom says to me, Sorry, I just didn't have time to fix it myself, since the kid is just running around. Which ironically, at this point, he was just chilling at the table with his mom. I tell her it's fine and move on to continue with my original task. A moment later, the kid proceeds to entertain himself by throwing all the spoons around the floor, as in taking one in his hand and then just tossing it as far as he can. And lastly, while I was carrying a tall, heavy stack of plates to the table, the kid is just running around and bumps into me. And the plates kind of wobble, and my heart stops for a second because they look expensive and if I break one, I'll have to pay for it. Luckily, none of them drop, and again, the kid just stares at me while the mom giggles. When they finally leave, the mom thanks us for being child-friendly, which confuses the hell out of me. Is the place child-friendly if kids can just dick around because the staff is too busy and awkward to tell them to stop doing that? When they left, the rest of the shift moved on as normal, and things got rather peaceful. 3. While I'm not fully employed as a server, I've been doing freelance while in uni, mostly for family friends' events and businesses. My sister and I were asked to work the 50th wedding anniversary of a couple we've known our entire lives. Easy enough job. Just do the champagne reception and then stand at the bar making drinks until around 2am. At least, that was the pitch. When we arrived at 2pm, party was supposed to start at 3. First thing was that we were told we wouldn't be standing at the bar. There wouldn't even be a bar. We were supposed to set up shop in the kitchen they improvised in their garage and make rounds from there. The hosts, being mindful of the additional work that would be, arranged for two employees of the food caterer to help out who wouldn't have been there otherwise, so despite being employed by the caterer, they weren't on duty for catering that day, that'll be important in a minute. Now the hosts were high-class people, really wealthy, went to elite schools, had been part of local politics in years past, and of course, most of those invited came from those circles as well. That's why we were instructed to not let people who weren't family of the hosts, who we all knew, enter the kitchen, and specifically made an announcement to their guests at the start that there'd always be a server walking around or standing near the kitchen entrance to ask if they needed something. Of course, people both ignored the helpful server stationed, as well as said announcement, and proceeded to waltz into the kitchen every time someone felt that the people doing rounds were taking too long and they wanted their drinks now, goddammit! And in all honesty, there's absolutely no way we were taking long enough for any rational person to complain. There were barely 200 guests, and we had two people walking around and waiting for orders constantly. 
The most stunning of the 15 people we had come into the kitchen, however, was a middle-aged woman, significantly younger than the hosts, who asks where the medium-sized plates were. We had no idea what she was talking about and politely told her we weren't working with the catering right now and had no idea about the dinner plans for the dishes. Sadly, one of the catering employees let it slip that he actually did work for the catering service in his attempt to be overly correct, which would come back to bite him later. So she laughed, visibly displeased that she went out of her way to ask for something and hadn't received it yet, but came back about five minutes later telling us, yes, not asking us to, telling us to collect the dirty, medium-sized plates and wash them, because they apparently were needed. We didn't really have a setup to actually do dishes apart from glasses, but wanting everyone to be happy, we told her we would, and started to improvise. Simultaneous to our other work, we had one of the caterer guys pick up dishes and wash them up whenever we could find the time. On his third round of collecting plates, however, he comes back irritated, and tells us that there are plates on the buffet table that are clean and free to use. Not once to assume anything but the best about people, we thought the caterer had brought in new plates after the lady had asked us to do the washing up, stopped and went on with the drinks. About ten minutes later, the woman comes into the kitchen yet again, and she's downright angry, and demands to know why we hadn't brought out the medium-sized plates yet. Telling her that there were plates on the buffet table didn't seem to please her, and when she finally told us what her problem was, we tried our best not to laugh at her. She somehow was so incredibly pretentious and snobby that the only plates she could eat her post-dessert cheese from were medium-sized plates, not the big plates that were at the buffet table. The caterer had intended those for the side dishes, however, and only planned with one of those plates per person, so there hadn't been any left for her to use for her cheese. She starts getting loud, telling us that we absolutely had to wash the plates for her because we were there to work, weren't we? My sister and I, obviously more comfortable in that position, knowing the hosts, explained to her that the catering wasn't really our job, neither were the dishes, and that we weren't employed with the caterer anyway, we were just friends of the hosts, making sure to put the emphasis on the last part to maybe get her to leave. That, however, only made her turn on the helpless caterer employees, who she tried to convince with a mixture of angry half-shouting and shaming them. When they didn't respond as she had anticipated, she actually went to get the caterer himself, who told her exactly what we had told her, and gladly didn't throw his guys under the bus. In the end, she didn't come back into the kitchen again, but was fuming at every one of us who passed her during rounds, and we eventually noticed that she had actually refused to eat from the cheese plate without her precious medium-sized plates. 4. At the start of last week, two customers, a girl and a guy, came in towards the end of the lunch service. We close at 3pm to reset for dinner at 5pm. They come strolling in at around 2.25, I let them know that we do close at 3 and ask them if they think that's sufficient time for them, and they said it was fine and they'll be quick. At this point, we still had three other tables eating. One of these tables asked for the bill, so I brought down the bill and the card machine, while the other waitress took this last order. When I was sorting out the bill, I overheard the guy say, I'll have this, the number 58, very clearly. I remember this because I thought, great, that'll be quick to cook, and they'll have time to eat rather than scarf it down. 58 being a mixed fried rice. The girl also ordered something relatively quick to cook. So a few moments later, the food is ready. I take it down to them and I say, this is the number 58, mixed fried rice. And the guy goes, uh, this is not what I ordered. I said I wanted chicken and pineapple fried rice. So I apologized and took his dish back. I double check with the other waitress and she said he even pointed at it on the menu and was sure that's what he ordered. I heard too, but you know, it's not a huge deal and we tell the chef to cook the chicken and pineapple rice. I serve the fried rice and go refill the other table's waters. When the guy starts shouting, Hey, 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 
There's black stuff in my rice! Hey, why is there black stuff in my food? I go over to see what he was pointing at. And honestly, it was like two grains of rice that had caught in the wok. It wasn't burnt, just a little browned. I try to explain that sometimes when they cook using a hot wok, it can result in this. Firstly, I wasn't dismissing it, and I apologized. I said sorry, but before I could say something else, the girl starts chiming in. She starts yelling at me, Teflon! Are you saying there is Teflon in our food? You know Teflon is poisonous. Are you trying to kill us? This is unacceptable. How can you serve food to your customers with Teflon on it? I'm trying not to let this situation escalate, because we still had other customers in the restaurant, and try to tell them that our walks aren't Teflon coated, and that we're not trying to kill them. Then the guy starts shouting, Okay, then your plastic spatula melted onto the rice. There is melted plastic on my rice! Which, clearly, there wasn't. Two grains of slightly brown rice. No sign of melted plastic, I assure you. I checked after this drama, and found we have no plastic spatulas or in fact any cooking tools that were made of plastic. Then the girl starts again. You say it's not Teflon. You have served us burnt food. How could you do that? Carcinogenics cause cancer. You are poisoning your customers. I had run out of things to say, plus they continuously shouting on top of me. I apologized that he was so unhappy about the rice, and offered to have something cooked for him, to which he replied, I do not have an appetite anymore. I said I was sorry, and took the dish back. By the way, all the while they were shouting at me about Teflon and poison and cancer, the girl was still eating her dish. The dish goes back to the kitchen, but I still have the other customers to tend to. But every time I go to clear plates, and even when I was taking payment for the other table, they would start shouting at me about how Teflon is poisonous, and how unacceptable it was that we served them food with plastic in it. But then the guy picks up chopsticks, and starts also eating the girl's dish. At this point it's almost 3pm, and I have to start cashing up the till. I give both tables their bill, and the girl barks, I'm not done! I told her, that's fine, she can take her time, but I just need to sort out the till. We didn't charge them for the fried rice, of course, since they were eating the other dish and had almost completely demolished it, it seemed only fair that they pay for it. I go and take payment from the other table, take the money to the till, which means turning my back for a few seconds, and... Boom! The guy and girl go running out the door. At which point the other waitress saw them and ran out after them. They wouldn't stop. But the girl has a small paper bag from a famous cupcake shop round the corner, and the waitress grabbed onto that bag which made them stop. Then they start screaming bloody murder, accusing the other waitress of assault. So the chef also goes out for backup. I'd like to add that the other waitress is my mother and the chef is my father. Eventually, the chef persuaded them back in to pay for what they ate. It's just the principle, no? You were not happy with the other dish? We did not charge you, but you licked the other plate clean, rather than running off if they had spoken to us in a civilized manner about how unsatisfied they felt about everything. It would have been more pleasant. Anyway, it doesn't end there. They both go and leave one-star essay-long reviews saying how we put Teflon in their food, how she was assaulted, and admitted to running off just to let me quote her, I ran out without paying on purpose to stress them out. Seriously? 5. I work in a very popular restaurant in a very popular district in Miami. It's a really chill place, very laid back with outdoor seating. It's a really cool environment, and though I bitch and moan about working in the service industry, I'm glad I at least work somewhere fun. I had a three-top earlier tonight that, off the bat, were kind of annoying. You know the bunch. Sending you on multiple trips for refills, sending drinks and food back left and right, since they weren't prepared to their liking. They literally sent back a drink from the bar because they wanted a different shaped ice. 
Now, I'm a pretty patient guy, since you sort of have to be in this industry, you know? I was getting to the point where this table was consuming so much of my time that it was affecting my other tables as well. I wasn't in the weeds, but I guess you could say that I was in some tall grass. Everything up until this point was fine and dandy. Sure, the people were annoying, but they were still pretty nice to me for the most part. Things were going smoothly right up until two more individuals joined the table. They had outside drinks. I approached them and told them to chug the drinks or throw them away before my manager saw them. I didn't care that they had them. I just didn't want to get shit for it from my manager on duty. This is when all hell broke loose. What do you mean I have to chug my drink? I just bought it at your bar and sat down with my friends. Ma'am, I saw you walk in with it. Well, that's because I walked outside to smoke a cigarette before sitting down. Ma'am, we don't serve drinks in plastic cups, and especially not in plastic cups that have the name of the bar down the street written on them. This is ridiculous. You're calling me a liar? You're only saying I can't have my drink because you're a racist piece of shit. I want to talk to your manager. Now, guys... I am a really cool guy, really laid back. Nothing ever really bothers me, but this? This got me mad. So because I'm not allowing you to drink your drink that you brought from an outside bar, when no restaurant on the face of the earth allows outside food or drink, I am the racist. I'm just following policy. I was kind of shocked that she had said that, and I just stared at her like she was an idiot. Then one of the original ladies that was sitting at the table started chiming in, loudly. Oh, hell no. This is so fucked up. You would think that in such a hip area, and such a progressive city, people would be more sensitive about hiring racists at their establishment. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody in the patio is quiet and watching these ladies cause a scene. Well, I'm trying to keep my composure, but internally flipping a shit. This is ridiculous. I'm writing a review about you and how you're a racist and you're gonna lose your job. At this point, I was so mad that I had to really try my best to bite my tongue and choose my words wisely. But instead, I went to my manager, who had been watching the whole time, and asked him to drop the check for me while I took a break. I went straight to the keg room and had a beer. Apparently, the ladies continue to argue with my manager about how they were being treated unfairly and that I should be reprimanded. Oh well, he dropped the check, it was about $215 or so, with about 45-ish in gratuity which my manager put on, even though they're only for parties of six or more. Good guy. The men at the table, who sat and watched horrified the whole time the show went on, paid and didn't question a thing. I poked my head out of the server station as they were leaving to watch them go. The two ladies huffing and puffing and the three gentlemen looking rather embarrassed. All in all, it wasn't too bad and could definitely have ended a whole lot worse. The rest of my tables who witnessed the incident all tipped me really well, since I guess they assumed I didn't make any money on my problem table and wanted to help a guy out. A few of them even apologized for what happened. Still waiting for that review to go up. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 13. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use and sent in stories for use in this video. Hope all you folks have a nice pleasant weekend. Uh, I myself will be contemplating once again cleaning out the spare room that I didn't clean out last weekend, but I meant to. I've got until about the 16th to do it, so I might actually get left till, till next weekend. Uh, I've got somebody coming to measure for uh, windows, I think it is, is what they're doing this time. Uh, so that'll be fun. So I'll need to make sure they can get into that room for a start. It's not too bad. I mean, it, it looks worse than it probably is. I got rid of a lot of the junk that was in there already. And I think I just need to kind of tidy the rest of it up into the middle of the room so that the windows can be accessed and measured. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>